Hi, I'm Bess. And I'm Raphael. We are Two Peas in the Kitchen, and we share time-saving tips to help home cooks prepare easy and elegant eats. If this sounds like exactly what you need, hit that subscribe button and join us in the fun. Here we are today. We're very excited to show you how you can make very, very beautiful, complicated looking rustic peasant bread in your own kitchen in a matter of minutes. So recently we were at a brunch that we attended and one of our friends brought this gorgeous loaf of bread and everybody looked at that loaf and said, you made that? Nobody could believe it. The Nobody. crust, the crust was amazing. I mean, you, you flick it, you can hear the crust, a nice, beautiful <laughs> crust. Every time I've made bread in the past, it's never looked like that. But once she explained, she said, oh no, this is not, you don't even need this bread. This is the easiest bread. I'm not a home baker. I don't really do much, but I make this, this beautiful bread. It is the easiest thing. So then she gave us a recipe and we tried it. And we've been, um, since then, perfecting that basic recipe to try to make it even better and even easier. And we've worked on some methods um, of how you can do parts of the bread process ahead of time. We've, we've worked that out for you and you are not gonna believe how gorgeous this bread is when we're done. And this literally takes minutes and all you need, there's four simple ingredients, flour, water, salt, and yeast. That's all bread should have. It should not have anything else. You can add other ingredients. We're gonna have different variations of this bread later on in upcoming videos. You only need these four ingredients. You won't. You won't believe how simple it is. So one of the things we just want to talk about really fast before we get into <clears throat> actually making the bread is there are lots of ingredients in our videos um, that we're going to talk about, different things that we make, where you can kind of skimp on what you use to cook with, where you can do, use different varieties of certain ingredients, and it really doesn't matter. But with bread, because there are so few ingredients, it's actually very important that you use high quality ingredients. One thing we never skimp on is really high quality bread flour, which is what we're gonna be using in our peasant bread and in our peasant bread varieties that are gonna be coming in some of our later videos. And we've both been using King Arthur flour for years now, and I don't use anything else for any for anything. These recipes we're gonna be using their bread flour. Bread flour is not the same thing as all purpose flour. So that is a very important differential. Don't skimp on that. So that's one thing. The other thing is to use a high quality yeast. Um, we like this uh, Red Star instant yeast. The most important part to remember is that to make sure your yeast is not expired because otherwise your bread's not gonna work. It's not gonna rise. So check that expiration date and make sure that you have um, fresh, fresh yeast. And also we always use high quality salt. This is baleen sea salt. That's our little blurb on, on the ingredients that you need to use in this four ingredient um, bread that we're getting ready to make for you right now. Let's make it. So let's make it, Come yay. On. Okay, so the first thing that we want to measure is our flour. And I wanted to show you two different ways to measure it. One of them will be preferred and I'll show you exactly why. So when you measure flour, you wanna grab your, your measuring cups. So I need um, a cup, measuring cup, and a half because we're gonna add three and a half cups of flour. We're gonna do a little experiment here so that you can see the difference. The first way is to just put your measuring cup straight into the bag of flour, and then you're gonna use a knife or you know something like the scraping tool to level it off. Okay, that's one cup. What I'm going to do now to make this point is I'm going to weigh the flour with these two methods. So I'm gonna use this kitchen scale. Turn it on. Okay. Put the bowl on top, you can tear it to zero it out. So here's one cup. And there's a point to this, so bear with me. So we have one cup, three and a half cups. 600 grams of flour with this method. Okay, so remember that. Next, we're gonna show you the preferred way that, that we like to measure out flour. So I'm gonna use a different bowl here. I'll tear it out, or zero out, okay? With this method, we're gonna do something a little bit different. So we're gonna use a spoon to spoon it into our measuring cup, okay? gonna spoon this in 
Now this takes a little bit, a little bit more time, but that's okay because it'll be worth it. Okay, so I'm spooning it in, and I want to go a little bit over the top because we're going to level it off. Okay, so we're going to still skim it off and level, level it off, and we're going to weigh it with this method too. Okay, this is actually shocking, and we've. Um, so this resulted in 500, whoops, 528 grams with this method versus 600 grams with the, with the first method. So the reason I wanted to show this is we prefer the second method where you spoon it in and level it off. For consistency's sake, you want to stick with, stick with one method. So don't go back and forth between the two. Look at the amount of flour. I mean, that's some quick math here, so that's um, 72 grams more flour with the first method versus the second. If you were to make bread with, you know, the first method with the 600 grams, it's gonna come out a lot more dense. So that's why it's important to, to stay consistent. And we always recommend spooning it in, leveling it off, or weighing it. So we'll include both of these, um, both of these tips in the blog post in the link in the description below that you can reference when you want to make this bread. Okay, now we have our perfectly weighed um, and properly measured flour that Raphael has ready here. We're gonna get ready to add our other ingredients. So the next ingredient that we're gonna add here is our high quality salt. We need one and a half teaspoons of salt. So then the next thing we're gonna do is add our yeast. We're gonna be working with a half teaspoon of yeast here. Okay, and you wanna layer that off like that, and we're gonna pour that in. Okay, so the last ingredient that we have is our water. We're gonna have one and three quarter cup of cool water. Do not use hot water in this recipe because it has a longer proof time and it'll proof too fast. You won't get the rise that you want for your peasant bread if you use hot water. So this is cold water. And we're going to just pour that in right on top of our other ingredients. This is one of the things that is so fabulous about this recipe. A lot of bread recipes really work best when you have a fancy kitchen um, tool, like a KitchenAid mixer. This recipe, you don't need that. I do sometimes use my KitchenAid mixer to, to make this bread. And if you are going to use that, you're going to put it in the bowl of your mixer and just use the bread hook. You don't want to over knead this recipe, but you can do it in your KitchenAid mixer if you have one with a bread hook on a low to medium speed. We are not going to do that. And in fact, um, I think Raphael often does it just like this with a fork and then gets maybe his hands involved in the end. But if you just start mixing it uh, slowly with a fork, you'll see that it'll uh, pretty easily combine here. So it looks like we are almost there. There's no dry flour down there. But if, if your dough ball does start sticking too much to the corners where it won't even really come off when you're doing that, you may need to just sprinkle a tiny bit more flour into it. I would start with literally a sprinkling until it's just kind of pulling by itself off the sides. So you see when I kind of work the dough like that, it's pulling off the sides by itself. That's, what, that's how you want it to look. This looks absolutely perfect. We have all of our dry flour incorporated. It looks kind of raggedy and rustic and all the ingredients are incorporated. So we're ready to move on to the next step. So now it's time to let our dough rise or proof or ferment. The yeast is going to do its thing so that we have a well-risen ball of dough. <laughs> so you can do this two ways. You can either prepare this the night before that you want the bread or make it the morning of. So let me start the morning of. So if you want to get up in the morning and do what we just did here now, you're going to cover it up with, after you're done, I'm just going to take some plastic wrap, cover it up. You don't have to make it too tight and let it sit on the counter room temperature for eight to 10 hours before you proceed. That's for the morning of. If you want to prepare it the night before, you can do that too. So after you cover it up, you're simply going to place it in your refrigerator overnight. And then when, you, when you're ready to actually bake the bread, you'll take it out of the refrigerator, let it sit on the counter for about 45 minutes. One of our favorite and actually 
actually the most important easy peasy tip that we are providing with this recipe is the methodology whereby you can do this bread doing all of the preparation the night before and then doing the easy part of just popping it in the oven and sort of finishing it off right before you're ready to serve it. So this um, is our dough mass that sat in the refrigerator overnight. And now we're ready to proceed with the recipe, the easy part, um, after it has already done its first proofing or its first rise. So once it comes out of the refrigerator after that rise, you can see that the dough has really, really um, changed. It's larger and it's actually a lot lighter. So, but I'm going to show you now what we're going to do uh, with this risen dough before we let it sit for a few more minutes. Okay, so you really, this is really easy. It's, the dough is kind of sticky. So sometimes I like to, I have a little tiny bit of, of flour in here that I just kind of like to sprinkle around the edges because I can kind of work that into the sides that are a little bit sticky before I do that. I just find that that makes it a little easier to work with. So you're gonna do this. You're gonna take it off from the sides and you're gonna just take the corners, stretch them a little bit and punch them into the middle just like that. And you really just need to do this like one or two times around your circle like that. It's just kind of um, getting a little bit of the extra air out and getting it ready to do one final short rise. So there is the ball so that that is now kind of all incorporated right and you've got a really nice ball. And now I take a little bit of flour again, kind of around the edges, kind of just work that around so it doesn't get too sticky on the bottom there. And we are gonna let this now sit. Um, look at how pretty that is. It's really actually starting to look like a well-formed dough ball uh, to cook. We're gonna cover this up with the, just your same plastic. It doesn't have to be perfect for just about maybe 30 or 40 minutes, um, leaving that on the counter to just stay at room temperature while it's getting ready to pop in the oven. Now we're going to take our Le Creuset Dutch oven pot and preheat it in the oven. Now you might ask why, why bother using this? So for our home ovens, you know, we don't have commercial ovens at home. When they make, when you see gorgeous bread, commercially made bread in a professional bakery, they use steam injected, um, steam injection in their ovens in order to, to make their bread. We don't have that in our normal ovens at home, so we're going to use our, our Dutch oven. So that will actually create the steam that's needed in order to give you that gorgeous, beautiful crust on, on your bread. So that's why we're using that. So we're going to go ahead and preheat this and partially bake the bread with the lid on. And then at a certain amount of time, we'll take the lid off and we'll finish off the baking. So you want to put your Dutch oven inside of the oven right when you start to preheat it. So set your temperature to 450 degrees Fahrenheit and put your Dutch oven in. And when your oven reaches temperature, you're good to go. Okay, so now our dough has been sitting on the counter for about 45 minutes and we are ready to prepare this to go into our Dutch oven, which is preheated. Our oven is completely preheated to 450 with the Dutch oven inside. Um, we're gonna use parchment paper. So you're gonna take one sheet of parchment paper and our dough is, um, it's in a nice uh, ball here, as you can see, it's done the second rise. So I am gonna get this out of the bowl. Sometimes it's a little bit sticky, so you can just kind of turn it upside down. <clears throat> That's all done. So then you're going to take um, just a little bit of flour like I had before I was putting in the bowl and I kind of sprinkle that on the edges here and work it a little bit under the dough ball. Um, just it's going to help it kind of more easily work its way into the middle of the parchment paper and not be so stuck. And then take the knife and you're going to just make three kind of equidistant scored lines across your dough. And that is just gonna make the crust kind of open up a little bit on the top when it's cooking. It really looks very beautiful. And then you're gonna take the parchment paper by four corners like this so that you can carry it over to the oven so that it makes a little pouch. And now we're gonna go put it in the oven. So here we are, this is very hot. The oven is preheated to 450, so be careful that you don't burn yourself. You're just gonna take the lid off of your preheated Dutch oven and you basically just drop your little dough pouch 
right in. Might be a little sticky and that's okay. You might have to work it away from the parchment paper a little bit. Be careful you don't burn yourself. And then you're just gonna put the top right back on on top of the parchment paper, just like that, covering it up firmly. Because remember, Raphael talked about how we want that steam to be able to stay in the Dutch oven. Put it back in, and then we're gonna set a kitchen timer for 30 minutes with the top on. Once you have the bread in the oven for 30 minutes, we've set the timer for 30 minutes, you're just gonna let that go. After 30 minutes, it's not quite done. You're gonna go in and take the top off, put the bread back in the oven, and you're gonna set a kitchen timer for an additional 15 minutes with no top on in the 450 degree oven. So here is our final bread. Look how gorgeous that is. The first time I saw this, I could not believe that this was made in someone's house. So the parchment paper gets a little bit fragile. Um, you're just gonna lift it out. And now we're gonna cut into it and taste it. One of the reasons that this bread is so amazing is the crust. Listen to that. Come here. Wow, amazing. I mean, it really is look at incredible. that. It really amazed us when we first started experimenting with this bread, how professional it looks. I actually think this bread looks just as good as any peasant type bread Absolutely. that you're gonna find at a bakery. Absolutely. And people are so impressed when they see it. We entertain a lot together and we've had a couple dinner parties and brunches and we put this bread out and it elicits the same reaction every time. You made that, mm -hmm. people actually can't believe it. It's And it's impressive. so easy. Yep. Let's cut into this. So you'll want to use, you know, use a good serrated bread knife and I'm going to go ahead and cut it in half first. Okay, let's take a look at the inside. Look at that. How beautiful that is. And we're going to taste it. So this California Olive Ranch olive oil is amazing. I'm going to pour some in here. We're going to try some with the olive oil and some with the butter. And we're going to give it a taste. Thank Breaking you. bread with our friends, always the best. And um, another thing that's really amazing about this bread is it makes incredible toast. Mm -hmm. And after the first night that you... I need a moment. <laughs> All right, hold on. We're both <laughs> going to taste it. This is so good. It's so good. The crust is amazing. The crust is amazing. It's light and doughy inside. I love bread. And this is literally one of the best peasant bread loaves I've ever tasted. And it is concisely, perfectly delicious every single time. It is literally foolproof. One quick tip that we forgot to mention is that it's best if you let the loaf of bread sit on your counter and let it get to room temperature before you start to cut it. Um, the texture will be, will be better that way if you let it cool down to room temperature before cutting it. So just really quickly going back to, um, this bread makes amazing toast. After the first evening that you've served it or brunch or whatever, if you take your loaf and you wrap it up in a little parchment and foil, I don't know how do you wrap yours up when you refrigerate it. Like, I sometimes just put it in a plastic bag, a Ziploc bag. bag. Stick that in the refrigerator, Make it in the refrigerator, and then pop it out in the morning. It makes incredible toast. And the other really, really fabulous, most easy peasy tip of this whole recipe is this. This freezes beautifully. So sometimes what I do is I'll make a whole loaf and I'll just have a couple friends for dinner and maybe we'll only eat half of it. I will take what's left over, the leftover half, and I will cut it into smaller pieces, a quarter or even into thirds. And then I will stick each of those into a baggie right into the refrigerator, um, excuse me, into the freezer. Um, the benefit of doing it in smaller pieces is then you can just take out what you need. It, if you take it out of the freezer and let it sit out for like an hour, it defrosts beautifully you can pop it back into a 400 degree oven i actually stick mine right on the oven rack when i put it in the oven the crust gets really crusty again you can just kind of watch it for however long it takes to reheat it really does resume the same qualities that it has um, on the first night so you can actually make a couple of these 
cut them up and keep them in your freezer so that you have fresh homemade bread whenever you need it. It is the ultimate easy homemade tip that um, I really like to keep things in my freezer that I can just pop out at the last minute when I need them. So I highly recommend that. It works really well. We've experimented with that and it, it really, every single time just works out perfectly. We hope you've enjoyed this video and if you tried making the bread, make sure you leave us a comment down below to let us know what you think. And also, please join our pod, subscribe to our channel, please continue to join us on all of our cooking adventures and we look forward to seeing you the next time.